All right, y'all. So continuing with this Peru extraterrestrial situation, right? Here we have a video. This man in Peru just released the clearest footage of the entity that landed in Peru. All right, so we're going to check it out. If you're new, you know what to do. Subscribe, all that good stuff, man. And make sure you spam the like button so we can unplug some more people out of the matrix. Put hashtag unplugged in the comment section. All right, let's get to this. Since the 8th of August, Peru has been trending on social media, with more and more residents coming forward with stories and eyewitness accounts of alleged entities that have been reported throughout the area. Someone by the name of Gustavo shared an interesting photograph and update about what's happening in the area, and it seems that the sightings are not slowing down. Mm -hmm. This is the latest photograph that allegedly depicts the mysterious entities that have been encountered by the locals. The man said that the reason the entity's legs appear to be giving off light is because it was accompanied by a glowing orb, something that was detailed in earlier reports. Now, I know some people are going to look at this and be like, oh, man, get out of here. Y'all are, are really trying to pull one over on our eyes. No, man, I'm not going to sit here and turn my back on Peru like that and sit here and say, OK, they're, they're literally calling for military help asking, requesting, pleading for military help right now. So before I can just be like, ah, oh, nah, this is a hoax. Nah, man, I'm gonna give those people the benefit of the doubt first. Residents said that these entities were either giving off light themselves or they were accompanied by something that was giving off bright lights. The original uploader said that the photograph was captured on the 9th of August. One of the residents said that it's only been in the last few days that these sightings have been picked up by news outlets and said that locals have been encountering them now for several weeks. He said that they are extremely difficult to capture, and due to the bright lights they give off, it makes it difficult to photograph them. The man then detailed that several locals took it upon themselves to take out one of these beings, but said that bullets did nothing to them, suggesting that it was like they were wearing armor. The man continued by saying that the lights are blinding, and even theorized that they may have been used to disorientate the locals. Mysterious lights seem to be a common theme with these sightings. That's what I was just sitting here thinking. It's always a bright light. A light. A light. Maybe that's where we can probably exploit a weakness if we try to figure out what is the light for. Maybe they need that. Maybe that could be used to our advantage if we figure that out. And as of right now, it's not entirely understood what's creating these lights. Oddly enough, Many people throughout the area have reported witnessing glowing orbs. These luminous, spherical objects have been reported close to where these entities have been encountered. Those who investigate the unknown have said that glowing orbs are typically described as spherical objects that emit a soft, often pulsating light. Witnesses report a range of colors, including white, orange, blue, and green. These orbs are observed to move silently through the sky sometimes hovering in place or executing rapid and unpredictable maneuvers. Unlike conventional aircraft, they lack visible wings, rotors, or any discernible means of propulsion. Interestingly, all of these reports are happening just a few weeks after the US Congress conducted a significant hearing on unidentified objects. And one of those pilots described them in the same way. No wings, stuff like that. He said the same thing at that, uh, UAP hearing. While previous encounters with advanced beings often revolved around the unearthing of peculiar technology in isolated settings, the most recent accounts originate from a rural area in northeastern Lima, Peru. According to local villagers, they are currently facing an onslaught from armor-clad aliens standing at an imposing height of seven feet, bearing a striking resemblance to large gray or insectoid entities. A common theme with these sightings that have been reported across Peru is that the entities have big heads and large black eyes. According to local reports from the Iquitu indigenous people, the strange beings have been launching attacks on the community since July 11th, including one particular incident involving a woman who was grabbed from behind. The beings in question are believed to wear protective armor and give off a bright light. The residents from the remote region have requested assistance from the authorities. In See? response, 
the police and navy have been deployed to the area. See? And local residents have taken the initiative to conduct nighttime patrols. See? Now do y'all start to take them serious? I'm telling y'all, man, like, don't just turn your back on them like that. One of the locals said that their heads are elongated and their eyes have a black hue. This enables them to have a clear view of their surroundings before disappearing. Their proficiency lies in their ability to evade capture, and that as of right now, residents have only been able to capture blurry photographs of them. Based on information from local news outlets, villagers have drawn a comparison between the mysterious beings and Pilakaras, legendary creatures that are known to take out humans. Despite the unlikelihood of this claim, it hasn't deterred online users from embracing it. One possible theory suggests that these beings are drones that operate in the area. However, this explanation doesn't explain what these beings are, or why there are a large number of mysterious orbs that have been reported throughout the area. One of the key challenges in understanding these orbs lies in distinguishing between natural phenomena and potential unidentified crafts. While natural explanations are possible, some researchers propose that glowing orbs could be the result of advanced technology possibly piloted by advanced beings or utilizing unconventional propulsion systems. These theories suggest that these orbs might be surveillance devices, energy sources, or even probes sent to observe and study Earth. The ability to emit light could be related to their propulsion mechanisms or communication systems. The appearance of glowing orbs has historical and cultural significance in various societies, in some mythologies and folklore, luminous orbs are associated with spiritual beings, divine messengers, or portents of future events. These cultural influences can shape witnesses' interpretations of their experiences, leading to narratives that blend the mystical and the otherworldly. The consistent descriptions of glowing orbs from witnesses across Peru lend weight to the phenomenon's credibility. Witness testimonies often share common themes, such as the orb's ability to move noiselessly, change direction abruptly, and exhibit luminosity that defies conventional aircraft lighting patterns. The allure of advanced beings has captivated the human imagination for centuries, and one of the most iconic and widely recognized forms of these visitors is what's referred to as the Grey. Among the many regions of the world with purported encounters, Peru stands out as a place where individuals have reported close encounters with these enigmatic entities. Reports of encounters in Peru often intersect with the broader phenomenon and the narrative of visitations. And the scary thing about this is, I feel like they won't get the help they need because everybody's gonna feel like, oh, they're just doing that just to capitalize or try to go viral because of these UFO hearings that are taking place with Congress right now. We shouldn't do that. We should not do that, bro. Every case, we should take every individual case and and treat it separately. Like, don't do them like that. Individuals who believe they have encountered one of these entities often recount experiences of being taken. These narratives might be influenced by a combination of genuine experiences, dreams, altered states of consciousness, and societal influences. The reports of these encounters in Peru are part of a global tapestry of unidentified phenomena and narratives. Whether these encounters are genuine interactions with beings from beyond Earth or manifestations of cultural influences and psychological tendencies, they represent a profound aspect of human experience, a desire to explore the unknown, to connect with the cosmos, and to understand our place within the vast expanse of the universe. By now, many have seen UFO whistleblower David Grush go in front of Congress and tell the world his story. absolutely based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. I know the exact locations and, and those locations were provided to the inspector general and some of which to the intelligence committees. I actually had the people with the firsthand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the inspector general. Rush is an Air Force veteran and former intelligence officer and he received praise in many circles for being willing to come forward but he also knew that he would become a target of public scorn as well. And this and that's unfortunate, but it's happening to him. This week, a news site called The Intercept put out a report detailing a drunken episode of Grush's 
in which police were involved and details about Grush becoming suicidal. Grush, a combat veteran, has been open about his struggles with PTSD. Ross Coulthart, the journalist who initially interviewed Grush for News Nation, has pushed back vehemently on the Intercept story in what he sees as a smear campaign. Last night, the reporter behind the Intercept story tweeted out that he'd been let go from the Intercept after three years. I want to bring in News Nation's Brooke Shane. And the fact that he's going to get exploited like that and different things are going to happen to him and, and just put his character into question and different things, even though we knew it was going to potentially happen, it still sucks that he, they're going to do him this way. This is just getting started on what they're going to try to do to him. For Brooke, this reporter has a history of pranks. It turns out this was another. He thought it was funny to tweet out that he'd been let go when he had not. Yeah, that's right, Elizabeth. To clarify, that Intercept reporter was not fired. He was making a joke on his Twitter account, pushing people to subscribe to a new newsletter. But as this story about UFO mysteries continues to gain national attention, one organization says they've seen an increase in reports of possible sightings. I saw something last night that I cannot explain. An unexplained phenomena that's been happening for decades. That phone call from 1977, an Air Force pilot reporting a possible UFO. Sometimes it looked like two yellow lights and then sometimes it, it kind of came together as one. And tonight, reports like that are soaring. The National UFO Reporting Center says their volume of possible UFO sightings have doubled in the last few weeks. You get somewhere between 10 and 50 reports a day. Peter Davenport is the director of the National UFO Reporting Center, a non-governmental, non-profit corporation that collects reports of possible UFO sightings. We're getting reports so fast that we almost can't handle them. We can't can't process them fast enough. Those you Now, I'm not naive to say that some of these are just influenced by what they're seeing on TV and people just want to be a part of it, so they're going to make a mockery of it. We get that. We get that. FO reports boosted, Davenport said, by last month's Out of This World congressional hearing. Whistleblower David Grush, a former U.S. intelligence official, testified the U.S. is concealing a multi-decade program to collect and reverse engineer unidentified aerial phenomena of non-human origin. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. The Pentagon has denied Grush's claims, but the hearing, which produced headlines around the world, further fueled those who believe they have spotted aliens in the sky. The National UFO Reporting Center says in the last few weeks, they've received a mix of reports from mysterious orange orbs to dramatic sightings of structured craft. I'm not sure there are more sightings, but people are more willing to report it. Since it's found and that's what we want. We need that. Encourage people to do it. That's just like 911. You know, people prank call and, and dial 911 for no reason and do stuff like that. We get that. That comes with the territory. But we want to stop people from feeling like they can't and they're afraid to. No, no. Encourage more people to do so. In 1974, the National UFO Reporting Center says. It's processed more than 170,000 reports with sightings in all 50 states, though the organization highlights it is not an investigative body, therefore it can't validate these reports. Elizabeth? We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft artificial structures, or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, travelling a total of 2 billion kilometres to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely 25143 Itakawa, 
on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-travelling neighbour. It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, this mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object, with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely Maybe. close call with a possible alien neighbour, avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of? Itakawa is a Mars crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space-going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project, and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF-36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itokawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further, and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. When they land and the hatch opens, a more and more. perhaps we will be looking at ourselves. I just like saying them more and more. <laughs> in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the Interstellar Traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1 2017 U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan Stars Telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years, past countless other stars, before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet, a remnant of another solar system kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe, one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. Th That's what I think. Or, it's, I can tell you this, let's just say this, the more I look at it, the more I'm convinced that it's not space debris. Like, it's not space debris. It, to me, it just don't look, it just, I don't know, it's convenient and it just comes off as a probe. Some type of probe. That's exactly what I think. Yes, probe. 
The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history. If we were ever told about such discoveries, of course. One must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life, many of which are over a millennial old. The thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world. So it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics, and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, There's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and nope. most of the time the media don't really give attention to them." End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So the professor's opinions. And that's why it's important for us to figure out what this thing is. If we, what's the harm in figuring that out, okay, it is space debris. Okay, no harm, no foul. But if we do it and we find out that it is a probe and we are being watched or they are among us, wouldn't you rather know that? So yeah, I'm for trying to figure out. No matter how controversial, we find highly compelling. An ancient clay tablet buried away in the bowels of a British museum has been quietly baffling historians for over 150 years. This cuneiform tablet has been long housed in the British Museum's archives under collection article number K8538, however now known as a planisphere, it has nonetheless revealed a fascinating translation telling of an incredible story, one which described of an ancient comet impact with our own planet. Recovered in the 19th century, unearthed from the ancient library of King Azurbanipal in Nineveh, Iraq, by Sir Henry Laird. After feverish research, specialists found that 50% of the clay tablet intricately referred to the position of the planets and weather conditions. Yet in addition, the other half of the tablet described how a massive object, large enough to be observed as it was still in space, was tracked as the inscriber witnessed it approaching and subsequently impacting with Earth. Museum curators explain, the Sumerian astronomer, it would seem, decided the event was of such great importance, he made tremendous effort to pinpoint its location in the sky, making an accurate note of the object's trajectory relative to the stars. Incredibly, from this remarkable skill, they claim they were able to pinpoint the precise comet, and it turns out that the object observed by the Sumerian astronomer was the asteroid that impacted Kerfels, Austria. We find this astute research, the possibly successful complete decipherment of the tablet, not to mention its ability to allow us to listen to a witness story of an event thousands of years ago, wow. is indeed incredibly fascinating. Wow. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. 
when the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material. They merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet Ooh. alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien, artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. Their forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in Crystal's mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft, somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is in deep- And I think tonight we're supposed to have maybe some type of meteor shower. I don't know, Queen was trying to text me about it, so I'm gonna have to look into that too as well, now that I'm hearing about this. Indeed, the most likely scenario.